He had to have an awkward conversation this weekend with his mom and let her know that at 58 years old, it's too late for her to abort him. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice. We're going to mandate to get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Gray? That's right. Handball, Brian. You stop and pull your dick out. You know, uh, the little things in life. I have thoughts. Uh, I uh, So I was traveling uh, back from Denver on Sunday, and uh, it strikes me that they have these Centurion lounges now. Ooh la la. Yeah. Plus the Amex. The Amex yeah. card. So I was like, oh, yeah, see if they have one over here. Of course, uh, when you ask the first person who works at the airport if they have a Centurion lounge, they're like, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I don't know. What's that now? Directories I, over there. I don't know what that is, why you go to work somewhere every day and you just just – you don't want to commit. Yeah. I, I, you don't have thoughts. Like you must walk past it. There's big signage. Yeah. So not I'm my like, department, man. Yeah. So it's like I, I don't know. But go to the help desk yeah. and uh, went to the help desk. The help desk airport guys are the most enthusiastic. I think they're all volunteers because it's always the same dude. He is in his sixties. Mm. He's got a fanny pack, and he is so into helping people. At that place. But it turns are there, out... Are these guys that previously spent 25, 30 years like crunching numbers at a bank or doing some sort of insurance adjusting, and now they just want to talk to people? Yeah. Yes. In the twilight They years. love being on their feet. They love helping. They love guiding. And most important, they love knowing shit that mm. the other person doesn't know. Right. And so this guy was given this... <laughs> Buddy, I get it. <laughs> ...long-winded explanation about where the rental car was to somebody in front of me that just kept going. And I was kind of like, all right. He's, he's got it. He got it. But uh, anyway, there was a Centurion Lounge. So I went to the uh, Centurion Lounge. And uh, here's what I'm getting to. The, the, the death of the bartender is I knew it. Mm. I grew up watching sitcoms and TV shows and movies where you'd like pull up to the bar and like, hey, Al, how are you doing? Looks like you could go for one. You know, the guy be wiping the glass sure. endlessly with it, the same rag. It's the shining with the ghost. Yeah, uh, yeah. with the ghost uh, bartender. Scatman Crothers. Having trouble with the ladies. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, and, and there's some exchange on the house. Now they're these just kind of generic body kind of employee people, and so I go to the uh, Centurion Lounge, and I had a um, had a had a moment. So I was like. Um, you give me a uh, vodka, soda water, and lemon? And the guy goes, uh, we do vodka, cranberry, vodka, orange we juice. We do? Yes, or vodka, grape juice. Do you have soda water? Soda water seems like a very low bar to cross yeah. in a century easier. lounge. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, he's like, yeah. yeah, easier. But this is what we got. This is, nah, it's not what we got. It's what we we're do. authorized what we to do. Here's right. what we can offer. So I go... Yeah, we'll just do the vodka with some soda water. Right. You shot from the gun, you know? And he's like, nah, I can't do it. And I go, okay. Tell me you drill down. Just give wow. me, then how about just give me vodka and and water? Could, could you do that? And he's like, no, nah, we do vodka, we do cranberry, we do grape, we do orange juice, vodka. That's what we do. That's what we're authorized to do. You should have gone five easy pieces on him and go like, I'll have a glass of soda water yeah. and a little bit of With shot of vodka. Of, yeah. And uh, you look the other way. He wasn't going <laughs> to fall into that room. Vodka so chaser. I said, why don't you hold it between your knees? How, yeah. So I said, just give me the vodka <laughs> and then the lemon and then just don't don't put the grape juice in. He's Walk like, away. Then he gets, he gets upset at this point. It's like, hey, these aren't my policies. And I thought, why be a bartender if you can't implement some of your own shit. So he wasn't you know? even going to give you just the vodka? He no. was, he, had, he had to add something? Yes. Wow. wow. That's, a, yes. that's a mystifying policy. This is Flippy the robot as yes. a human. I was just thinking about that. Like we've, we've, we've removed the ability for people to think. So he got a little uh, protested. He didn't. He said it wasn't him. You know, it was his I job. Mean, I understand you know, whatever. that part, but that's absurd. Yeah, so he wasn't. And also... Um, you know, I, this ability to be just a little bit fluid, you know, yeah. like what if they want like, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a vodka. I'll put just a tiny splash of cranberry and a lemon and mm. go do with it what you will. You know, I'm not, you know, no one's checking the mark on the beaker that it has to be six ounces yeah. of cranberry. It was like, no, nah, he was not, he was not playing. But then I thought. Who's coming down on him? Yeah. I don't know. But our I kids are going to grow up. Yeah, the, the, It was such an age old 
relationship, that bartender and the guy pulling up to the bar. There's, there's, that's gone, Daddy. He, he knows what's best for you. Let him handle it. Yes. Also, you know what I mm. on that note, yeah, bartending. I was thinking about this as you're telling your tale. Bartending has gone two very distinct different mm-hmm. ways in terms of the relationship with the customer. You either autom- automaton, mm-hmm. just, you know, mm-hmm. vodka, soda, whatever, or not in your case, but right. whatever the two, ing- two stroke ingredients are, as they call them, or it's mixologist yeah. who, who's modeling right. and he wants to tell you about, yeah, like yes. the strawberries are from, right. you know, Fresno from a far, independently owned farm. Locally no. sourced. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Oof, we've gone, uh, we've gone to the extremes. Also, uh, Brian, on a, a good note, a complimentary note, uh, I was just doing uh, me and Dr. Drew's show, and oh, somebody no. called in. Uh, let's see, I'll make sure I get his name right. I think it was Michael. Uh, yeah, Mike from Pennsylvania, 53, and his wife had a brain tumor oh, shit. a couple of, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, and he reached out to you, oh, wow. and you put him in touch with Christy. Oh, really? And, oh, uh, fuck, good. And she was very helpful, oh, wow. and everyone was very helpful, and, and helped and recommendations that they used and so on and so forth. That's so uh, That's really great to hear. I, I hesitate to ask, how's his wife doing? Uh, I did not ask. Good. I just said... Plausible deniability. <laughs> right. I just said, he said it was very helpful, so I, I took that as, as a good sign. Well, so, I'm good. very glad that I did that. Good community, so uh, that's good. Also, there is a. Um, I had thought. I had a thought about a very subtle word change on the flight. Oh. And uh, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very into language mm-hmm. and how it affects us and why and how it how it works. It was a very subtle word change in a flight, but it, it'll it'll uh, I'll dovetail it and tie it into. Um, Page 88 of uh, my latest book, Everything oh. Reminds Me of Something. Oh. Preview. We were doing, because uh, Doss and I were doing the uh, audio book yesterday, and uh, this page, short short statement, but it uh, it made, or short-ish paragraph, but it, it reminded me of this, this word thing. So go ahead, Dawson. I've long been a fan of the adage, don't feel, this is a question coming from uh, someone else. I've long been a fan of the adage, don't feel like a victim and you won't be one. With that mindset, how do you think our society will be affected long term when so many are offended, either personally or on behalf of someone else? Or in other words, what are the long term effects of an affected nation? From Daniel 38, Ontario, Canada. Here's your answer. I definitely covered the victim identity permeating our culture and the outrage on behalf of someone else in my last book, but a word you used got me thinking. Affected. Last year, a college basketball coach misspoke, saying something about a plantation, and someone ratted him out. The details are unimportant, because what I noticed is something in the mea culpa from the school. In their statement, they apologized to all those affected. Back in the day... They would say sorry to all those offended, but offended is on the person who's taking offense. Offense is in the eye of the offended. Offense is an eye of the eye of the offended. This change in vernacular is a sign and a bad one. No one was affected. Nothing happened. They might have been offended, but they were not affected. It's part of the exaggeration of and elevation of. Words to actions that the left has mastered. Mm. So well said. Yes, on the Dawson. in the offended department. Yes, you you are offended, but that makes you Christian or uptight or old right. or set in your ways. Mm-hmm. But affected. Now we have to stop somebody because they're affecting you. See, now the yeah. language. You, this person can't talk anymore mm-hmm. because he's affecting people. Versus if he's talking. When I was growing up, Richard Pryor offended people, but no one said you got to stop talking. But if he was affecting people, now you got to stop because there's an action. Yes. And it's so funny because when, like like you're saying, it's not like for those who have been affected by whatever the action is that the person's talking about, it's not even that. It's those who are affected by the statement. You know what I mean? It's not like anyone who's been affected by an in-home burglary. It's the fact that Mm. somebody said the words in-home burglary. I uh, was then thinking about that because as I was getting on to our 100% full Southwest flight to Denver, um, 
that was uh, last week, I, the announcement um, came over the PA. It was a flight attendant. And she said something that made me pause <clears throat> because, you know, my all roads lead to narcissism and we're getting into this very dangerous thing of wow, wow, wubsy, or it's a uh, Nike, you know, it's your world and everyone's just kind of living on it with you and all that kind of stuff. She said, enjoy your flight. Now, it was always enjoy the flight. The flight. The flight. The, the mm -hmm. flight meant it's all of us in what? one place. Your, by the way, there's nothing further than your than Southwest. <laughs> I was sitting, Mike August was in the, no, Sonny was in the middle. I was on the end. Some fat guy was sleeping against the window. It was a 100% full flight. Mike wasn't even in our row because we were, you know, B-46 right. boarding group. We couldn't, we couldn't sit together. But if it's your flight, then that's your armrest. Yeah. Nope. You know nope. what I mean? Nope. If that guy's arm is on the it's one between toilet. you, it's your, <laughs> your, your. It's very, in, there was nothing broken with uh, enjoy the flight. That that's, we're that's all on. Universal yeah. statement, but enjoy your flight. That's when, where mm, we're going. When in fact, it's our flight. Mm -hmm. Our flight. Collectively, there, 121 people, wherever it is. There's no more greater. You, you, let's put it this way. I don't care how crowded the restaurant <laughs> is or the amusement park is. There is no such thing as more humanity and less cubic footage of space than a 100% full Southwest flight. If you factor in the width, the oh, height, yeah. and the humanity, oh, yeah. that is as crowded as you can get. There's no more your on that flight. It's all our. And then they're also talking about put your mask on, then put their mask on, then the people who are manning the emergency doors need to exit. Wait, we're still putting our mask on? I thought we were putting our mask on. If we lose a change in altitude. Oh, the, the, the oh, oh that mask. That oh. mask. Sorry. I feel very triggered and I was yes. affected by that statement. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, that was an interesting uh, the mm -hmm. versus versus your. Interesting. You know, it's tangentially related, but do you guys, I don't know, I flew Virgin a lot back in the day, you know, wherever, Barry or whatever. And this is the last great airline that has gone now. Uh, but they had a uh, video. We watched mm -hmm. the video, you know, the, the whole thing mm -hmm. with the song and dance. They had a second video that was animated and the whole theme, I think the title of the song was we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, I don't know if you remember this or not, but it was basically don't be an asshole on this flight. Like don't check up all the space mm. and don't spread out. You know, it, it was a nice message from uh, a rarely um, acknowledged theme from the airlines. Yeah, well, now we're living in the uh, narcissism, and this is a byproduct, I think, of all the self-esteem movement and everything, and now we're at your instead of uh, the. Um, all right. Uh, some I was wanting to get to from last week. We got a couple. We got Roe v. Wade. We got uh, this Mar New Rules thing, which I loved from a week and a half ago that we never really got into. Oh, you found the Virgin uh, video. Oh, no shit. Already. It's like a little animated thing, like 90 seconds. <laughs> they have Virgin, to talk to us like kids. Virgin's not going out of Burbank anymore. Virgin, Virgin is gone. No, Virgin's Alaska. gone. Alaska. Alaska bottom. And uh, then also JetBlue isn't going out of I don't Burbank. know about that. They're still pretty big. They kind of dominate the... the Remember yeah, big... JetBlue went to LAX, so they used to do like Burbank and Long Beach. Burbank, and like yep. too. You could get to New York on, on JetBlue. Real silverware, I know. cookies. <laughs> That's where I had one of my, my strangest exchanges on an airplane, which is uh, sitting up in JetBlue, wanting to fly JetBlue, hearing how great JetBlue was and looking forward to JetBlue. And I was sitting in probably first class, or maybe they didn't have a class. Maybe it was all medium class, but I was just sitting there. And uh, I've told you before, but it's been a while. The, the woman stewardess came by with the wicker basket mm -hmm. with the snacks in it. And I uh, said, yeah, you want a snack? And I said, yeah, what do you got there? And she said, uh, it's all in the menu. It's, it's, it's all in the, in the laminated card in front of you. And I said, okay, but you just tilt it down and I'll, I'll, just, it right yeah, I'll pick the pita chips. You don't even and have to say like, it. Sir, it's, in the, it's, it's, it's on the menu card. Mm. And, and I go, there, there were four offerings. You know, mm. you want the cashews, you want the barbecue chips. I was like, it just, just let me see what you got. And she's like, it's in the menu card, which is insane. And then when she came back again, I said, uh, what what do you she said, you want a drink? I said, Yeah, what do you got? You got, oh, you got, you got Miller, wrong? you got Miller Light or you got Coors Light? I'll, I'll take a light beer. What do you it's got? In it's in the menu. 
I, I go, but do you guys, is, you guys, so you're e- to train this guy you, doesn't learn. You either have Coors you. Light or you have Miller Light. Like it's just whatever the light is. So mm-hmm. it's in the menu. I, it was a, a weird. Uh, there are times I would like to stop and get a trained clinician and like lay somebody down on a sofa and just go, <laughs> what is happening right? What is going on? Like, do I look like your stepdad? Is that what's going on? Or was there some policy that was discussed earlier? Did I wrong you on the way out of the ship? Or, or you know, yes. Oh, did you did you like did you hate the man show? Or was there some edict that said uh, in the menu we have uh, we have our bonus rewards club? So mm. steer oh, everyone. You know, yeah. and I, it, I don't. I really don't. Yeah. I have no idea other than whatever's happening shouldn't be happening, and I can't make sense of this. Yeah. And if you grab the basket to tilt it down, that's, oh, a, that's, that's assault. A, no. You'll be that's taped assault. to the seat. Yeah. Let's go back to a better time and yes. watch the 60 second. We're all in this together from Virgin, defunct Virgin Airlines. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Method and Virgin America would like to remind you that we are all in this together. Flying through the air, through clear skies and the breath. What year is this? Oh, We're six, this oh, seven. Oh, simpler time. <laughs> Talking loud. <laughs> Don't talk loud. Punching by Tyson. Oh, my high club. Dawson. Hey, old Booger. Booger. Booger flicker. Yep. We're getting a little silly. We got yeah. the idea. Fun, Murph. fun, mirthy, but, but and also snappy, and that's how we need to be talked to, where we won't listen. Yes, uh, in a in a very uh, jocular animated video. All right, well, good poll. Uh, now we have uh, Bill Maher. New rules from I don't know two weeks ago. Was it Chris? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was very. He's uh, Bill's had enough of the kids oh. and the nonsense. Yeah, so here he's talking about the uh, Washington Post controversy from a couple weeks ago. A guy retweeted a joke. Oh. You yeah. guys hear that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, he'll, yeah. he'll explain it. Sorry. Nice. Mm. Yeah, well the emotional done. Emotional hemophiliac is fantastic. The uh, Yeah, but now circling back to the self-esteem movement, which is there's a, there's, a, there's a giant burden a lot of people walk around with, which is everything has to do with them. Right. Mm. This has nothing to do with her. This is a guy. He retweeted a joke. Not everything should fall That's not a personal attack. Uh, onto, your, onto your table, onto your, your work desk. The other thing is, is I mean it. I know this person. We have given, not given up on, but we used to have hobbies. Like people had hobbies. They built ships and bottles, women macrame and crocheted. They had a and, garden. They had a garden. Like there were just... Things and whenever I see these people, I know they don't have hobbies. Their hobby is outing yeah. people yeah. on Twitter. You're seeing the hobby. Your hobby needs to be going out and planting bulbs and you know harvesting Roma tomatoes and then making them into a into a red sauce. Not sitting around here all day. And I I really do think there's a straight line between the lack of the hobby which engages people, it sort of satisfies them, it pulls them out of whatever whatever that feeling you gets have. Gets them out of their own head. Gets yeah. them out of their own head. Something, we decided that hobbies were kind of passe and kind of for dumb folks. For like we, boomers. We picture like old men whittling yes. on a porch, you know what I mean? Get out, put something together. Dig into something, but yeah. and, and whittling on a porch sounds great. Don't make your hobby sort of cause oriented, because I all that does is mm. aggravate you. You'll you'll end up. You can have space carved out for this movement or that but that's movement, not a hobby. but that's not a that's yeah. not a hobby because that's just you getting more agitated. agitated. I know this isn't what you mean, but in terms of like course or uh, cause oriented, start doing charitable work. Get out mm. there and, you know, hand out some hams or some lunches or spoon some soup. It's, it'll cleanse your soul. Totally. Completely concur. So uh, 
I love I love this version of Bill Maher. I don't Normally, know I grow weary of the you know, kids these days, but that was a pretty that was a pretty solid takedown. Yeah, I, it was I, succinct. I yeah. totally agree, and it's what happens when all the self esteem <laughs> people get moved into sort of corporate America, yeah. and now this. Well, to both of your points, the millennials are forty, mm. so we're not even talking about kids anymore. We're talking about people moving up the corporate ladder, and we're also just talking about why you would want to give away your power to be um, to regulate hurt, yourself, injured, offended, yeah. affected. You know what I mean? Like why hand that yes. away to everyone yeah. is on the internet. You're going to have a pretty fucking miserable life. It's really your seeding power. It's, it's essentially a life where you have tons of allergies versus, versus none. This is just, there's so many things that will upset you that are out there that you can't control. All right, let me tell you about uh, American Hartford Gold inflation at a 40-year high. Yes, since Adam graduated North Hollywood High. (laughs) Interest rates skyrocketing. Experts like uh, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon predicts a recession using terms like economic hurricane. Protect your future. Do what I did. Call American Hartford Gold. They'll help you protect your savings and retirement by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. One short phone call and you can have physical gold or silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. Highest rated firm in the country, A plus rating from uh, the BBB, the triple B. Thousands of satisfied clients. Tell Ma'am Corolla sent you. And you can get up to 150. I should say 1,500, send you up to 1,500 of uh, free silver in your first order. Right, Dawson? Call 866-899-2028. That's 866-899-2028. Or text Adam to 998899. That's 866-899-2028. Or text Adam to 998899. All right, quick break. Right back after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. I'm 42 years old, Adam, and I gotta thank you uh, for telling me I'm a douche. I have a pair of uh, fans, checkerboards, slip-ons, and after you had your rant, I threw them right in the garbage. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Don't leave those next time. Come on. Yeah, I I touched on it on stage in Denver, but I didn't really drill down on it, which is, um, first off, you turn on the TV, there are one million different kinds of shoes out there now, and they all seem excellent. Yeah. Every time I see a Skechers ad, I'm like, hey, look at that. And, And I see one for... Just everything they have now. Like, they're all good. When I was growing up, it was kind of you know, Nike and Adidas. But the van. Loafers. Yeah. yeah. Converse or Hush Puppies. Right. We, uh, as I said, we were hiking Red Rocks, and uh, I saw these rock and roll guys, and they, had, they, had, they were in vans. And it's a steep, it's steep, it's hot, it's like people are sliding around. I could not imagine doing that in those shoes which are just a slab uh, of rubber on who's, the bottom who's too cool for arch support i don't know Is chris we we passed uh, quite a few rock and rollers going yeah. up and down right yeah the dickies the vans uh, definitely not hiking mm. attire in, in any way um but yeah so i don't think they they hike a lot like just judging by their attire and uh, but I mean, you know, it was a crew. Were they show rolling widespread in panic <laughs> fans? Yeah, right. Yeah, they're gonna be there all day. I, I, they didn't look like jam band fans either. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't know. I can't. I couldn't really place them. They just looked like, like California kids that were in Colorado wow. or something. You know, it was a short-lived, forgettable era that burned white hot during my formative year, middle school. I'm like, talking like early '90s, like '91, '92. Pumps. Remember, I'm talking mm-hmm. about ladies' with the pumps. Tongue? I'm talking about like Reebok pumps, Fuck, Nike yeah. pumps with the release valve. That's right. Here's how you know that was bullshit. No one wears them today. If it was revolutionary technology, everyone would be wearing them. Well, it's funny because they have some throwback ones because now my husband's becoming sure, like it's a all fucking ironic. sneakerhead. But no, that's the thing. No. He never oh, had no. them. And he was like, Gina, they, they pump. And I'm like, what area of the shoe do you think they pump? And he said, the bottom. I go, no, oh, no, 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 no. The, the fucking, yeah, like the tongue mid- in yeah. the top. 
It was they, all done. Uh, it was also the first time a hack, had hackneyed <laughs> comedy writer saw that commercial. They had, of course, work the scene in where Chevy Chase was pumping it too much and it blew up. Oh, it's Austin the, Powers. Yeah. Yeah. Talcum powder right. blew up. Uh, and, oh, that was Austin, Austin Powers. Powers yeah. yeah. So um, mm. your husband's becoming a sneakerhead. Yeah, he's really into LeBrons and stuff. It, You know, the problem with discouraging that kind of behavior. Yeah. Those guys, those guys end up doing pretty good with those sneakers. That's the thing. He's oh, I mean, this is what, and this is his hobby. You said get a hobby. Well, he listened, unfortunately. And it's do you like these LeBron 18s or do you? I'm like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Now I understand what guys are like when it's like, do you like this dress or this dress? I just have face blindness, shoe blindness. I don't know what I what I'm looking at. I don't know what he's talking about. It's you, not my thing. You can't wear the sneakers if you get a good. Like a valuable pair, yeah. Right? I mean, he wears them because that's he's like, should I wear the blue ones to the thing or the purple? I'm, I I don't oh, know. Oh, because the next level is paying thousands of dollars oh. and not being able to remove them th- from their hermetically mm. sealed, you know. Unless we move closet. up three tax brackets, there will be a Gina size hole in the fucking door if he does that. Mm, hey, Kool Aid. Yeah. Yeah, widespread panic was a band, and it was funny. We ran into this guy. We were walking around the uh, Red Rocks Museum. And uh, we ran into a dude who was kind of Sasquatchy, who was uh, explaining that he was a widespread Panic fan, who was the band that has sold out m- like more shows there than any other band. It's interesting. They're from Denver. Yeah. I guess they're local. And uh, that he was at the show the night before. And then uh, Mike jokingly said, so you're still here? Or did you sleep here? And he just goes, No. <laughs> And then we all sat down, and we all had the exact same <laughs> vibe from this guy, which was something was off. Uh, mm-hmm. on, wasn't tracking. On, on this okay. guy. There was okay. something. But if you get up to Red Rocks, go walk that museum underneath there. It's, it's very, very interesting to uh, figure out uh, who's played there and how many times. And then, of course, we saw our friend's Blues Traveler up on the wall, and they were in the Hall of Fame, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Apparently, they're from Athens, Georgia. So what gives? Widespread panic? Yeah. I'm looking at it, but it says oh, bands oh, like. Oh no! I I screwed that up. I screwed that up. There was big head toe. Big no, head Todd the monsters. Big head Todd the monsters. I think it was. Oh, that's and a I was thing. saying to Chris, you ever heard? Auto man. Yeah, and I was like, you ever heard of big head Todd? Oh, yeah. and they, they made their way to Kansas City. And he's like, City. no. And I was like, well, uh-huh. they played Red Rocks 26 times. There yeah, you go. And Red Rocks is a big venue. Yeah. Like it, that's not a club. Yeah, and they so they have a they have a whole hall where they have they list every single band that's played there by year. And I mean, that name is so long that it, it just it stands out <laughs> each year. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. I'm surprised Chris never heard of them, but they're before his time and they're for, they're the Colorado based band. Got it. Um are you going to are you going to see Blues Traveler? Um, I'm I'm in the I'm in the works. They're playing on Fourth uh, of July, and I'm trying to I'm trying to out figure here? it out. At uh, no, at Red Rock. Oh, oh nice! You're back. Oh, you oh. must. I you got to see Blues Traveler at Red Rocks, and uh, it was interesting. I, I talked to John for a while uh, at at lunch, and he was explaining that he has to come in a couple days early to acclimate his voice. Oh, that makes sense. Interesting oh, yeah, sure. with yeah. the altitude. Because yeah. when you get up to Red Rocks, which is, you know, Denver's high enough. Red Rocks is well above Denver. Yeah. You Take walk stamina. up that flight of yeah. outdoor stairs to get up to the patio level, and, like, you, f- you find yourself steadying yourself for a second. Like, you, there is acclimation. My brother has made the pilgrimage from the Bay Area to Red, Red Rocks multiple times to see a Dave Matthews band. Oh, all right. Rent an RV. Yeah, oh. I told you the story before the, the, about this fact about him. My brother has a weird, like, remember the comedian who would do everything about roller coasters? Geechee guy. My brother knows everything about fucking motorhomes, and we were on the crazy one down in San Diego. Remember, mm-hmm. I was like... Yeah, Dude, thoughts. look at this thing. It's like, oh, that's the HR seventeen. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I uh, whatever it was. I the jam van. I'm a little confused by. Mm-hmm. It feels a little more drug related than mm-hmm. it does a, a Sonic pursuit. <laughs> I, I don't want to. They're tied together. I, there's something going on, but uh, Dave Matthews is. Dave Matthews seems like a nice balance between hits and jamming. Yeah, he plays there. songs, hits that go right. on forever. Uh, all right, we got a couple of questions here. We got a cop. We got somebody with this uh, Rudy Giuliani thing. Oh yeah, which is on line. Well, oh, he was assaulted. Yeah, it's assaulted. Todd, Massachusetts, forty-seven. Hey, how you doing, guys? Love the show. Hi, guy. 
Hi. So I wanted to know, uh, did you see the Rudy Giuliani tape, and what do you think of them calling it an assault? I would not call this an assault. Is he recovered? I hate it when people do this. But the guy who assaulted him like, brought up, got brought up on felony charges. I, I don't like, first off, I thought it was a woman because the, the person was oh, so the slight mm-hmm. and yeah. had long blonde hair. I thought it was a woman who touched him on the back. Yeah. I don't, look. Uh, R- wiping his boo-boo away. Right I don't after. think you're allowed. Look, if you work at a store... And you touch people, I'm against that. You're probably not allowed to walk by people and no. make contact with oh, them. Oh, was he an employee? I never yes. Knew yes, oh, he, was an, he was an employee, not allowed to do it. I don't know what he said that uh, does not rise to the level of assault or anything close to it. And I do not like this right or left when someone puts their hand on someone's shoulder yeah. or something. Like, he assaulted me or I, I feared for my life or something. Rudy seems like a fool trying to make something make out of this. Yep. Uh, now, I wonder if he tried to make something out of it before, before the, video, the video. Yes, Because the video is a nothing burger. It still means the guy touched him shouldn't have done it. And it still means that guy's a douche. But it certainly does not get to the level of anything close to assault. But this is part of the problem with us in language, turning yep. everything into into something it isn't. And I'll go you one further. If the guy kind of smacked someone on the back that works there and like said something fucked up to him, he should be fired. But then for Ju- for Rudy Giuliani to get on board, and go and we're going we're going after you. Like, there may okay. be injuries. Okay. Yes, no. And if you're injured by that, then there's something faulty. We got to put him in a hamster bubble with sure. with with you. So uh, I don't know, Todd, big head. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I am definitely on board with you with the warping of language. That drives me crazy, and I do not like calling something an assault that's not, or calling anything that's not what it is. It's 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 degrading our ability to communicate with each other. Well, uh, 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 society. one hundred percent. Because I'm sitting around and I hear somebody assaulted Rudy yeah. Julian because we have now taken this word assault, which was very specific. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know what the what the legalese was, but it had to leave a mark, and we've spread it into what Al Franken did on the C-130. You know, we've just, we just expanded it to the point where we only have words for descriptions, you know, and this, I could sit around and go, Rudy Giuliani was assaulted in a store, some crazy, took him to the ground. Is, man, like, is he okay? He's not a young man, you know, and then it turns out nothing. So the words are, are horrible. <laughs> it's important to be consistent when this happens to someone on the right or someone on the left it's important for everyone to remain consistent on this. That was not, you can't be rooting for your side or your right. guy and trying to make something out of what was clearly nothing. Fair Is that enough. satisfying? Are you fair? All right. Hey, man, Ryan on line four. Oh, please take Ryan. We, Ryan. The call we need. Ryan. Okay. Ryan. Okay. <laughs> Bottom front. Oh, okay. Yes. He's going to explain the bottom friendly menu. Ryan, <laughs> oh. Ryan, yeah. We played the Uber Eats commercial <laughs> celebrating gay pride, and uh, they have a special menu if you're gay. For bottoms. Your bottom. And you have an explanation of that? It's uh, more than just an explanation. I, I share your outrage. Uh, I feel like you need a uh, gay truth teller on the show to celebrate the end of Pride Month. Mm. But uh, are so you I, I, are you gay, you guys, Ryan? You? Are you gay? <laughs> I am gay. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, you may proceed. So I, I, I will. I, I wouldn't describe myself as specifically a bottom, but uh, I have some experience, you know, on, on both ends of the spectrum. But uh, I, I guess the, the my big problem with it is uh, kind of as Gina pointed out, um, it. Play, pays a pretty unrealistic expectation. I mean, you're literally fucking a dude in the ass, and you're creating an expectation that shit isn't going to happen. But, literally. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. I, well, it is true, and and so you tell us because you know the world. Uh, we've all gone out and had fast food and chili fries and all that, and had ourselves a little BM the next day, but we've also gone out and eat, eaten a big garden salad in a pear mm. and had a nice dump the next yeah, day. That'll go through you like a salad too. shooter. And it's not like if I was there and you're looking at the two stools from the two different days, I don't think anyone would be happy about the organic locally grown shit that was floating in the toilet either. 
I, I think that's pretty accurate. There's, there's a little, I mean, difference in consistency, I guess. I mean, if you just take a fiber supplement, like seriously, get on the, uh, what are they, what's the one for old people? Like Can't remember the name of the top does, of my head. Does Metamucil. one, so, okay. Do, so does nice. one need to do an enema before doing this? No, one doesn't need to do anything. It's like, because Adam has big 4th of July plans. You feel better. No, right. I, I'm saying what percentage of bottoms do an enema before they engage? Oof. I, I probably say it's like, it's, it's kind of like, I mean, what percentage of women douche before they engage? It's like, it, it really depends on the circumstance. No, but, no, you know, I, I agree. I, party. I would, I would agree. <laughs> And I do speak for all women when I say, oh, good. I don't think 10% of women do before intercourse. I don't, I don't think now it's on yeah. my rider. Yeah. So they do with me. <laughs> Veggie tray, veggie tray. That's right. Bullet rye and some summer's Eve. It's all backstage. Don't take the labels off. <laughs> and do not mix up the bullet rye with the summer's Eve. That's it right. doesn't go down very well at all. But I'm saying is it there's there's some preparation you can't just uh dip your stick in the honey pot can you i mean yeah you, you kind of can i mean it's like and you can do like like a, a two minute version of a preparation take a shower right it's mm-hmm. like well, have, right. a, have a have a pm and take a shower but yeah. you're not it's like you wouldn't go in and just do it like you know four hours after you know a giant meal not take a shit and then you know that, that seems like a bad idea, yeah, but in general... I don't know enough of, about the human anatomy to really... I, you're right. I'm picturing your anus as like a Pez dispenser, and there's just another one waiting right next to Popeye's mouth. <laughs> but, the, but the reality is, is there's probably nothing chambered, right? Right, but think about when you put a knife, like a butter knife, in a Heinz ketchup bottle. Mm-hmm. You don't want to... It just comes out. You don't yeah. want to get it too, you know, really get yeah. in there. Call me old-fashioned. <laughs> I would. I'd like the enema myself. Uh, well, you're 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 like a dick. Kind of fills that cavity pretty well. When you stick the, if you're going to stick a warm butter knife in your asshole, I think that would probably get messy too. Yeah, that's. But true. you're pushing it up. <clears throat> like, all right. But, oh. That's why you just you take a little fiber and. All right. Sorry, this is really really important. I heard it on a pod, a science podcast. A PSA for everyone. Oh, it was explaining. I can't remember the name of the podcast, but it was. It takes apart different movies, like scientifically, and they did Jackass, and they were talking about when he got the little like Hot Wheels car stuck in his rectum, mm-hmm. because when you put something that's not attached to anything, like like n- untethered into your rectum, it, there's a vacuum on the other end that Sucks will suck up. it farther oh, up. So okay. please be careful when you do your kink play, everybody. Yeah, especially. Oh. De- detachable penis guy. That's right. Um, all right. All right, Ryan. Ryan, get that drop ready again. No, kidding. You always want to have a flared base. What is oh, yeah, a flange? A flange of some sort. Oh, yeah. What is, uh, what is the name for the gays who can toggle so easily between top and bottom? It's, it's just it's versatile is, is what they call themselves. Utility player. Right. Mm-hmm. The swing man. Ambidextrous. Yeah. yeah. All right. And, and that's, so the, there's that's, actually like five, like people would describe themselves generally as a top, a bottom verse, or like top verse or bottom verse. Five tool like player. A, a mm-hmm. scale. All right. Thanks for the insights, that's Ryan. Awesome. Will, you be our, will you be our resident gay? I'd, I'd be mo- I'd be more than happy to. Oh, yeah, uh, I've been a fan of the show for a long time, and I think all the Pride Month stuff is just ridiculous too. Thank you, Ryan. All right, let's see. There's uh, Trevor. He's a police officer out of Riverside. Trevor. Me haw. Me haw. Hey guys, Paul, Gina. Hi. Hey. hey, what's going on? So. I kind of wanted to let you rant for a little bit about crime in Southern California and recidivism and drug offenders that get to repeat and repeat and theft offenders that get to repeat and nobody ever goes to prison anymore. And then kind of hit you guys with some startling facts about what really happens when people go to the justice, go through the California justice system. Well, Adam has no thoughts. I was thinking about recidivism just literally yesterday, which is, 
we have, we must understand that the very small percentage of or the percentage of any kind of crime, especially look, there's two kinds of crime. There's the crime I give a shit about and we as a public give a shit about. And then there's the kind of the other stuff where it's like this one's on you. Mm. You're you're doing fentanyl in your mom's basement. Like I'm not that interested in punishing you per se. I'd like to get you help, but it's not the push the person into the subway tracks or, or stab random person in the neck who's getting onto the elevator like that. That's the scariest. Um, It strikes me that it has to be a very small percentage of people doing it multiple times because do you know anybody who's ever even put their hands on somebody who they didn't know in public in any kind of way that would raise to the level of like a violent crime. Like, do you know anybody who's, you know, like once you cross that line, like you cross this line into, Hey, there's that elderly woman and she's walking over there and she's got a bag from home Depot. Let's get it. I want what's in that bag. That is a very hard line to cross for even the people, you know, that weren't great in high school and maybe put their hands on their Mm -hmm. friends or they got into some trouble or a drunk driving or the domestic situation or something. Going and putting your hands on strange person and taking their belongings is a very hard line to cross. And it has to be the same people doing it over and over again. Otherwise, it wouldn't really exist. And it's also, it can never be one and done. It's like you break into a house or just pulling a gun on somebody, like robbing a liquor store and holding a gun up to someone's head. Like nobody will do that except for a very small group of people who will do it a lot. Yeah, and and, people can't be persuaded into doing that. No, and, not on people the fence. And those people, if they're not incarcerated, are just going to cycle through. And that's why every single one of these stories, like they were arrested twenty eight times. They've been arrested. Someone in New York just got arrested like their one hundredth time for shoplifting. Oh. It's the <laughs> they get a party. It's this very small group of people doing the same thing yeah. over and over again, giving us the perception of a more violent or more dangerous society, which which it is, but it's only because of these people and this notion of like, these are low level drug offenses. We got so caught up in this prison reform. If you go look at it statistically, these are career criminals that do do drugs, did get caught in drugs with drugs, but this is not their only crime. Go ahead, Trevor. I agree with everything you just said, but um, I thought you, I was listening to you guys talk about juvenile offenses the other day and Gascon's recall and all that good stuff. I just thought you guys would find it interesting to know that you can't charge any juveniles under the age of 16 as adults in the state of California, which makes the maximum penalty for anything up to and including murder that they would be in state prison until they're 25 years old and then they get out. I mean, that guy who drove that car into that woman in the alley yeah. walking with her stroller was 16 or something at the time. Mm. That is an insanely scary human being who sh- who is has proven he is capable of anything yes. at any time. If you can randomly on a Tuesday at noon be going down an alley in Venice Beach, California, see a woman pushing a stroller and go, I'm now going to aim this car toward that stroller you cannot be out amongst yeah. the populace. Terrifying. And I, I don't know how this could go and any other way. Six months, right? And, and, well, and then what's you know, the other thing too is what a cop. Okay. So when you start beating up on cops and you start turning them into the problem and, and then the cops get mm-hmm. the message that if I arrest that guy, he's just going in and he's coming right out revolving door then how are cops motivated? Like how much, and you can tell us, Trevor, like how much a police work is just kind of cops now going, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to spend all this time booking this guy Mm -hmm. to see him out on the street the next day. But you tell us, Trevor. Well, it's kind of gotten to the point now to where you're trying to find kind of justice through other means. Like, yes, you're going to arrest the same guy over and over and over again for theft. And the startling one, like, if you wanted to go down some whole gun control path is that I can arrest a gang member with a gun and he's going to get released probably by tomorrow. If he gets convicted of it, he's going to do less than a year in County jail. 
So it's, you get to the point now to where you're just glad that you got the gun Mm -hmm. and you're just glad that you got the drugs. Like they didn't give the drugs to somebody else because I got them. Even if the case doesn't get filed, even if the guy gets out of jail, at least I got the drugs. A little victories. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a, it's a, it's a zeitgeist thing, which is like I said, I grew up with a family who was like, oh, rich people are evil. And we've now decided that people in prison are like sort of noble. And it's only because of their circumstances. We're supposed to thank them for their service when they get out. Yes. We welcome them back into the community, according to Garcetti. Look, um, and this thing, too, where people go, well, they're poor. You know, what are you supposed to do? It's like everyone grew up poor. Historically, there's been many poor people. You do not have to commit crime. You don't have to put your hands on other people. You don't have to injure other people. You don't have to kill other people. You don't have to take their belongings. You can just be poor. There used to be something called poor and proud. Hmm. Trevor? Trevor? Yes, sir. Thank you for, uh, for your contributions to society. Amen. I do my best, sir. Thank you. Right, back to work. All right. Let's see. Last, we'll talk to you. Rich from Anaheim is 58. Hey, what's happening, guys? Hi, guy. Um, relative, r- relatively new listener. Hmm. Only about six months in, but i got to tell you, I, uh, because of it, I've read all your books, and I absolutely love the show. Oh, oh, you guys are great. Make it up for lost it's time. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Question for you guys. As I am, I, I, I follow you guys on, on Twitter, and when things are posted, uh, how do you guys deal with the negativity that is that is pointed directly at you and deal with, I, I read some of the stuff that can be so vile it's like my god I would lose my shit I had noticed kind of negativity every day. <laughs> I I don't think Adam gives a shit correct I, and frankly, I, I don't either. I weirdly don't see most all of uh, much of negative stuff. This has been going on for a, a decade. Well, he also doesn't know how to work Twitter. Yeah, you got the happy filter on. Yeah. Oh, maybe I do. No, I'm joking. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> I, I don't know how to do stuff, really, so I don't seem to notice. I find that most people are pretty good, and then that the, the mm-hmm. ones that the ones that aren't, you have to kind of keep your ratio. I mean, I think it's about a ratio. Mm-hmm. If, if you're getting... 65% yeah. negative, that's bad. I'm getting 95% positive and then 5% negative. I think it's your job to, um, for me, I don't like inaccuracies. I don't mind, um, I don't mind people being like, somebody, uh, somebody tweeted me, you said Roe v. Wade would never go away. And I said, you're right. I was wrong. You know, I just tweet them back. Like, oh, they got a point. Like, they're, I did say that, and they were correct, and they said it back to me, and I said, yeah, you're right. So there's a part. There's another part. I ask people to explain stuff all the time. Like, they'll, they'll go um, so-and-so. Bottom-friendly menu. Yeah, it's racist or something. And I'll go, give me some examples. Like, tell me wh- where you're getting this or what you think about it. Um, I love that. And I also yeah. notice when you do ask that question – you rarely, if ever, get a response on that. Silence. Because, like, I'll, listen, I'll read yes. it and go, like, I know, because Gina's had a lot. She's like, all right, well, what do you, give me examples of what you're talking about. And then it goes blank. Never and I'm thinking to myself, again. if I'm going to be saying something like that, and then they're going to come back with a question, you have to fucking answer the question. It's but true. they don't. Yeah. And it's, it, it boggles my mind. It really does. Yeah, it's been, it's been a raucous weekend on Twitter in my world because oh, yeah. I had the audacity to say that I'm, I think it's overturning Roe versus Wade is wrong. And it, you're going to hurt oh, a boy. lot of people. Can you're going to you're gonna hurt a lot of women. A lot of, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a million reasons and it, it, we can get into that or not get into that. But um, I've never had an abortion I'm pro-choice. It's not. It might not be the right choice for me. That's my choice. And I've been called a man hater, a baby killer, and these are things that it's like that obviously doesn't affect me because I'm neither. I, how many times on this show have I said if in a different world I would have gone into fathers' rights advocacy? And mm-hmm. how many more people? How many times have I said I'm glad Johnny Depp won because I think there this is a, something we need to shine a light on when things go this way. But some people they just don't have the capacity or the desire to understand things. And it's more fun to pretend you're on the side of the righteous. Just say they're dumb. They're dumb. And, and But that's the thing. It's like, where were these people? 
the last 50 years when women were having safe procedures. Nobody said a thing. And now that it sounds like you got what you wanted. Now, all of a sudden you have who women are your enemy. Like what is I, I don't get it either. But there's been a lot of people who have been coming out of the woodwork, raising their hand and, and showing the public who they are. And it is it is eerie. I don't know that they're oh. they're dumb because there's no, a no. lot of people. Oh, I a euphemism. No. Yeah, I know. Regina there's a lot of people on both sides that are like educated. Yeah. And they're articulate. And they craft their stuff pretty good. It's scary. I wish they were dumb. Be it's easier. it's no scary kidding. that they're educated. Yeah. A lot. There's a lot a, of people. It's such a it is such a bizarre world that, that we're living in. I mean, I'm 58, so I'm not ragingly old, <laughs> but I tell you, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm okay being on the older side of things because I think shit is going to get uglier than this, yeah. the way it just seems, which it's, is so bizarre to me. I, I think just that, don't. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, people say, well, you're keyboard courage, and that's true because nobody would say this shit to your face. We just had a barbecue with 500 people, and they were the nicest people on the planet. Like, we, we attract a lot of good people. But it also, I do think it loosens up discourse for how you interact with your family, your friends, people you know, and it's, uh, diplomacy is, it has gone the way of the dodo, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, you know, the great... Uh Dennis Prager always says he would prefer clarity over agreement. Agreed. And I agree with And we that. have to sort of get back to that point. We're, we're, we're never going to agree on, on many things, but clarity, at least. You must explain, explain your point and be clear. Yep. And then we'll have clarity. And then we'll understand how you feel and how he feels or she feels. But uh, people, I think people put too big an emphasis on agreement. Like, I need mm -hmm. to find... Uh, people who agree with me, and it's like I want clarity. I want you, I want to know what you're thinking, and you have to. Agreed. I want that fucking bartender to tell me why <laughs> I couldn't get straight vodka, yeah. and he had to put cranberry juice in it. All right, uh, Wendy Liebman, real funny stand-up, is uh, going to come in in a second. We'll talk to her first. I'll tell you about Master Spas considering a backyard makeover. Wish you had room for a pool. Get a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. Combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. Has a water current so you can swim against that current. And get some exercise in. Do aquatic exercises. Have fun with the kids. Comes in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard. Even a small backyard. Since it's heated, you can use it year-round in almost any climate. Or I'll just say any climate. 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. You'll love your Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas. Am I right, Dawson? Go to masterspas.com. Put in the promo code ADAM to save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps swim spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com. Promo code ADAM. All right, Wendy Lieben, who uh, I'm just reading on my screen here, is opening for uh, Bill Maher in Hawaii this year. Ah. Oh, so you see her on your trip. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> when you guys take your family trip. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with Wendy right after this. Good to see you again, Wendy Liebman. I can't believe I made you laugh. Oh, that <laughs> so stuff happy. is funny. Jokes. Thank you. Jokes. Nothing better than a joke. <laughs> uh, especially like it's true, like returning clothes. That, that just strikes strikes a chord in uh, in most men um all right so so much to uh talk about uh a plug first hollywood improv coming up july 8th and uh also the locally grown comedy which i've done at uh, vitello's which is a fun it's a nice room up there i owe you a hundred dollars oh. because you did my gig like two years ago and you didn't cash the check well my <laughs> My son can eat now, finally, after all this time. I didn't cash your check. I don't think you did. Oh. And I thought, oh, maybe he didn't think it was like like a show. <laughs> no, I have to like send it to my accountant. And oh. sometimes I get, you know, something gets disconnected. Can you imagine, <laughs> Wendy? Can you imagine when you were younger not cashing a $100 oh God, check? No. I well, first off, I'm 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 amazed, and and you probably are as well. Like if you have kids, like when they're younger, you know, like 13, you go like, do this, you know, go empty the this or rake the lawn, and they go, ah, I'm not into it. And you go, I'll give you 20 bucks, and they go, eh, so, <laughs> you know, move the needle, old man. And they're like, if someone would have dangled, oh. you know, I would have done gay kitty porn when I was 13. If you sure. dangled 20 bucks in in front of me, it doesn't. 
it doesn't move the needle because it's invisible now. It's all on their phone and they all have Apple Pay. You have to pay, pay them and, in crypto. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't have uh, Venmo. Oh, boy. Oh. See, the Venmo is a great. Yeah. Here, here's the scam. Are you ready? Okay, I don't wanna, I don't I'm wanna, upset now. I don't want to tell you how to produce a comedy show. Tell us, guy who doesn't have Venmo. <laughs> here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. You do. You book your gig, and when you book the gig, make sure everyone's older than fifty-five, right? <laughs> right. And you call it Legends of Comedy at Vitellas, you know what I mean? And then you tell everyone it's five hundred bucks a ten-minute set, and they're uh-huh. like, oh, "All right, I'm in." Then you get all these old fucks in there, and then when you're cashing out, you go, "You got Venmo?" What's that? And now? They go, a vending machine? I like Venmo. Yeah. And then you go, "No, Venmo. You have Venmo." And by the way, the person doesn't have it gets on the defense, like, yeah. "Oh, I, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm like not good with the, the phone." And you go, huh, yeah. "That's, that's what we got." What have we learned? And then they just leave, and that's it. You never have to pay them. I gave you a check. I know. I should have given you I cash. Know. Yeah, cash. Cash is cash. great. Mm-hmm. She's not your grandmother. You're she doesn't right. have to give you cash and a birthday card. You're right. So you're. I'm. <laughs> I'm reading uh, about you on your bio, and it said you did a stint in as a psychology researcher at Harvard. I did, um, and I read about you that your dad was a psychologist, yeah. or is? Yeah, still is, um, kind of. So I was going to be a therapist, and then I realized I'd rather make. A hundred people laugh, then one person cry. And um, now I just chill. make a hundred people cry. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, I was going to be a shrink. Do you, do you connect your psychology with your humor? You're not doing jokes about shrinks. What I mean is, it's like you look at life from the lens of sort of a therapist or someone who studies the human condition and then sort of transfers it. Maybe that just happens. I think I, I'm sensitive to people. Um mm-hmm. But really, actually, it's just a way for me to get therapy because I can't afford therapy. So I just perform comedy. No, I'm joking. You're uh, you're going out with Bill Maher to Hawaii. I am going to be opening for him in Hawaii over New Year's. Oh. Two dates, um, and I was supposed to do this five years ago, and then I was hit by a car. And I think I came in here right on the end of me being yeah. hit by the car. About three years Yes. Ago. Yeah. So I wasn't able to do it that year. And then the next year he had Sarah Silverman. And then it was COVID. And then he had Nikki Glaser. And this year it's me. And I don't know who the other person is. You should, you should do it. Oh, boy. I'd yeah. love to do <laughs> this it. Is, this is uncomfortable. It's great. It's an excuse. This is uncomfortable. It's a vacation. No, we always... <laughs> We joke that Bill Maher doesn't want him through, to come to Through it. Kyle Dunnigan's <laughs> voice that he doesn't want uh, me on this. But uh, now you, you kind of laid out a theme. It seems like he takes a woman out to open for mm. him. You think that's what he does? It's actually two people on each show. So mm-hmm. I was just remembering the women. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know who. who oh, it was Bobby. Um, Slayton? Lee? Slayton. Oh, who oh wow. Been, Sarah, I think. Huh. Well, yeah. maybe I'll blow a call into Bill because it just seems like an excuse for a vacation, right? <laughs> Basically, it's four days in Hawaii and two of the last two are performing. And so. the performance is 20 minutes? I think so, yeah. So you basically work 20 minutes, and right? And party. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's a great vacation. Yeah, I'm going to have to get a bathing suit, though, because I haven't worn a bathing suit in 40 years. Uh, I had a bikini. It was a top, a bottom, and a blindfold for everybody else. <laughs> Just elaborate. doing my material. Am I allowed to do that? I have to tell you, I, I, I'm i like a long-time fan of yours. Long, long, long. My brother and I, oh, my God, you know? huge fan. And so something we always grew up saying to each other as a joke, because we were trying to be you, was how, you know, you didn't get along with your boyfriend, and you realized you just were two, going in two different directions in life. Like, I was a night person. He didn't like me. Um, <laughs> we were that joke yeah. has been in our lives. For our entire lives. Thank you. I'm, I hope he likes you, though. Whoever. Oh, the he's. Yeah. I finally snagged one that likes me. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. He put a ring on it. Oh. Like, yeah. I I got engaged when I was 38. Oh, mazel. And I got married at 42. Nice. It was love at first sight. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> but um, no, we've been together 20 years. To a Sherman, right? Yes. A Sherman. Adam, I know this matters I, to I'm you as re- well as I'm me. I'm reading it Richard? here. As uh, in Bo- Robert Sherman. Sherman. Uh, the Sherman Porter brothers, a Disney 
I yeah. feel seen right now. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Mary, Mary Poppins, Chitty, Sherman Chitty, Brothers. Bang Bang, Jungle Book, Aristocrats, mm-hmm. Aristocats, yeah. I should say. Okay, yeah. I was confused. So my husband, when he was seven, came home from school, and they, his dad said, what did you do today? And he said... They gave us the vaccine for polio. Yep. This is and my father in law said, You let them give you a shot. And he said, No. They put it on a sugar cube and they put the sugar sugar on a spoon and we just ate that. And my father in law wrote spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. So that wasn't a phrase that was coined by, you know, the I know, founding you fathers think? or anything. <laughs> that story was going around online everywhere during COVID vaccinations. Right. And no one could really verify if it was true or not. So now we know it's true. It's on Snopes now because, oh. yeah, because my husband verified it. But, um, yeah, it was big during COVID because people were. Ex- and was there a lot of this with the young lad? Like they did come home <laughs> confused going, we had a bird that was in a bush and that we. <laughs> We, we knew we had that one bird, but the, someone's Tommy said to go for two. There was nothing in my but hand. But then, the, then the one got away because... <laughs> hey, super Califragil. <laughs> and then he wanted to eat cake, but then he didn't want to... He but wanted he to have the cake, the too. And, uh, yeah, he came up with all those... Uh, wow, yeah. stitch and tie. Yeah. Yeah. New, Made a horse to water. New broom sweeping clean. He did it all. Wow. No. Nope. Yeah. Was he? Did he become exquisitely wealthy because of that endeavor, or, or was this sort of before you know copyrights? And, you mean or, my father-in-law? Yeah, like okay. selling it. You know, Disney owned it. Yeah, he might it have been and, a company man. And, it's complicated because I think they own half of the rights. Mm-hmm. Like every time a small world get play, gets played at Disneyland, oh I don't think we he, or yeah. my father-in-law heard any clanging. Right. <laughs> Maybe he got a hundred-dollar check. <laughs> It's in the back seat of my car right now, baby. Did he do bibbity boppity boo? He did he that did, one too. Because that just ran on a national ad like two years Ribbity ago. Ribbity rabbity run, yeah, I think. It was, a, it was a big deal. And yet, the guys who wrote it, the brothers, they didn't really get along, but they wrote all this like beautiful music together. So and, uh, then your husband does what or doesn't have to do what? No, no, he does. He, um, he worked on uh, Boy Meets World, the sitcom, mm-hmm. and he directed a documentary about the Sherman brothers that was oh, I saw that. highly yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Did really you see good. that, Gina? I haven't. No. It's very interesting. I'm in it for eight seconds. I'd love to see it. There's also a great Mike Rowe, the way I heard it about them. That's incredible. Are they um, portrayed in Saving Mr. Banks? They, they sure are, are by know. Ryan from the oh, office. I can't remember. Circle. Jason uh Jason, Jason Schwartzman, Schwartzman play Schwartzman played right. my uncle in law and, and BJ Novak BJ Novak from the office played my yeah father-in-law oh, so cool. who is gone now but yes that was very cool that was really cool i'm not done oh <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen documentarian yes it it's it's great, but it doesn't necessarily pay the bills mm-hmm. i've made a few documentaries mm-hmm. that you don't make a lot of money off them often sounds like a you know i'll tell you who's a documentarian ken burns rory kennedy mm-hmm. now here's my point she's a kennedy she can be she, a documentary, you know what I mean? I can make documentaries, but I have to go on the road every other weekend and do a full-time podcast because it doesn't really keep the, the lights on. But your husband... What are you asking? <laughs> saying I think your husband's got a little, uh, a little got a little old money rolling in. Um, he, he has other gigs that he works on, and he's also a musician. He just put out an album. Another example <laughs> of, of a... <laughs> Dawson, why aren't you touring right now with Led Zeppelin? <laughs> You're a musician. My husband is the funniest person I know. Everyone says that, no, but no, you're serious. clearly funnier than he is because you're Honestly, getting paid for it. Honestly, he is so shy, though. Like, he would never get on stage. He said, if I was on stage, I would just pee. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he, yeah. But um, so there's a little bit of that like Cyrano thing going on where he tells me he gives me jokes. Oh, that's nice. um, So I just took the curtain away. So he's writing all the good Not stuff. Not all. It <laughs> really went so fast. He's actually outside. No. I'm um, so that uh, horrible car accident we were talking about last time, I think. Tell us. Um, 
Tell well, us about that. We were in two, or I was in two accidents. In 2014, we were hit by a drunk driver, Oy. my husband and I. And there were seven cars involved um, on Ventura Boulevard. and Studio City. Yeah, um, like... Sherman Oaks, Sherman Oaks. A- Encino, and the woman in the car next to us died. Oh, my and God. And so that was like a really big wake-up call. And, and How yeah. so? Sorry, I'm curious. How is it a wake-up call? Yeah, what do Just you mean like p- we get panicky when we drive now uh-huh. a little bit. Um, but also how quick life can go by. And you just never know. What was the circumstance? I mean, would he hit okay. her first and she hit you? We or? were all in, there were four lanes of cars waiting to go straight or left. And there was a drunk driver who was in the breakdown lane, but then he saw somebody swerve out into his lane. So he swerved. He was going 90 something. Really? And we were all, yeah. And you say the breakdown lane. Well, like the little the shoulder. The, oh, like I the see. little, like where you, like the bike lane. Yeah, like there was like an extra lane. Anyway, he swerved into one car that hit another car, and the woman in the next car to us, her whole back of her. It was a Hyundai. The whole back of her car was in the front. The of The show car. sponsored by Hyundai. Yeah, sponsored. <laughs> no, did. So she's in a little car. This guy's going 90. Did they really clock him at 90 or figure that they out did. forensically? And then he got out of his car and he walked to the convenience store and tried to get a beer. Oh, my so God. So he Jesus. could drink. Uh, it was Blue Moon beer. So he could drink. They're also a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have so a knack, he, he Adam. He wanted to get a beer. Yes, because I guess he had seen on picket fences or something that if you prove <laughs> that your blood alcohol, you can't say when it was elevated or. I mean, that's diabolical. And right? also, why are they always the ones that jump out of the car spryly and they're drunk, walk away? Like right. apparently, your body is more fluid. Oh my god! So, um, yeah. So wait, I'm still not. I'm not. I'm, I've, I haven't studied this facet of the law, <laughs> but getting more beer in you. Does what to help your case? Well, they take your blood alcohol at the right. time. So maybe it was elevated because he just drank it. Yeah. Like he? maybe he wasn't drunk when he was driving. He oh, just. He was under the, the legal opposite limit. of what I was thinking. It, yeah. It's very fishy, of course, but like you go into the store, buy beer, vodka, or whatever, start drinking it. Who's to say when your blood alcohol level was over 0.08? <laughs> That's right. insane. So well, they, it would. Yeah, it would take. It would stand to reason. Well, anyway. So they didn't sell it to him, oh. but he, he stole it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I remember what it was because he put it to anyway. So that was one accident. Is he in jail, this guy? I have tried to find out what happened to him, but I have never heard back. I mean, we weren't bodily harmed. The car was totaled, um, but it saved us. Wow. Um, what kind of car were you driving? A VW. Not oh. a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you're a car guy. Yes, I am. I know. You know, during COVID, both my husband and I, our cars were eaten out by rats. rats. Yeah. Like $3,000 of repairs yeah. that are not under warranty. They, they climb into the engine bay and eat all the <clears throat> heat shield stuff that's above on the bottom of the hood, you know, so the hood doesn't... Like what heat. can I do? What can we do? Like, I took out the bed. <laughs> <laughs> you they went into the engine compartment, right? Yeah. Well, you're saying during COVID because the car was parked for too long. Right. Okay. Crash the car. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Go a buy beer. a beer. <laughs> Give me a six or blue moon. We'll settle this out and in the parking lot. Yeah. Um, but then the second accident I was in, I was hit by a car while I was walking. Oh, oh my right. God. And I, since I've seen you, I won the settlement. Mm-hmm. Um, she was found at fault. And I found myself during COVID when I wasn't working at it all going, well, thank God I got hit by a car. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have some money. Did uh, It's weird that you can't find information about, like, these people that yeah. killed somebody and almost killed you and your husband. I know. Are you going through the courts and are they giving you a reason? I haven't tried that hard. I just <laughs> I just inquired once about three years ago. I, think, I feel like a quick Google search might... I don't do remember his name off the top oh. of my head. She knocked on the jailhouse door. Hey! <laughs> I, had a dr- I had a drunken guy who destroyed my car, but I wasn't 
in it. Oh. Uh, but I did run into him at the Home Depot like 25 years later. <laughs> he was like, hey, bro. Was, How did you know like that old he times. did it? Like you had a camera? No, what what I it was a very very strange story that I that I'm not um, I'm not religious and I'm not spiritual and uh, I'm not really anything superstitious anything but, but I I do have thoughts about things and the way they're going and certain things just are it's like Inevitable. certain things are like a fight all like certain things are really easy and then other things are like oh god it's kind of it's it's kind of like you try to do something and it doesn't work and then you go oh, i'm gonna try it the other way and like it doesn't work and then you try it a third time another way and it doesn't work and so it should become apparent to you that there's almost an energy around it's not this meant to be yeah, right. where it's like it's not gonna happen mm -hmm. yeah and you're like it seemed before you start it seemed pretty easy now it's 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 not and um, like like a s stupid stuff like I'll give you like a stupid thing like remember all that talk a few years ago about like global entry card yeah. or whatever yeah. like everyone's gonna need a global entry card and I was like um, all right well I, I told my assistant at the time Matt I was like all right well make me an appointment at the Glendale DMV and I'll I'll go in there and get my global <laughs> entry card from from them and he's like. Well, the DMV in Glendale's booked up for 28 years, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, you got to the airport, man. I'm like, okay. It's convenient. Um, it's not at all. I know. I'm like, uh, okay. And then I realized I was going to uh, do a, a car race in Monterey. And I said, you know, Monterey's in California. I could just go to the Monterey. DMV was no waiting over there. I think I suggested that to you. Or, or Brian suggested it to me. It was on the air, yeah, because like, yeah. there's DMVs everywhere. Right. So he makes an appointment, and then he goes, but you can't get it unless you have your birth certificate. And I'm like, I don't think I have my I don't know where my birth. And I go search around. I can't find it. S smash cut to me going to renew my license, but they won't give me the global. And then I'm like, I don't have my birth certificate. And they're like, you could have brought a recent pay stub. No, oh boy. And I'm like, oh. oh. Where did it say that? On the website. I'm oh, like, that oh. check Wendy Liebman gave me. And I, <laughs> I, I, I kept saying to Matt, like, it can't just be the birth certificate. they got to have something else. It, half the nation doesn't know where their birth certificate is. It's like, no, nope, that's all. It, and it was, but it was a kind of wasn't meant to be mm -hmm. hassle kind mm -hmm. of. This was never going to be easy. By the way, the things that are easy, you never think about. This right. is like bang bang. They don't oh, count. It worked out perfectly. Yeah. You know, you don't right. you don't think about the the good timing. So but, some things have energy. But the older I get, I feel like things are easier. Well, you, that's you oh. having more forethought <laughs> and experience and shedding the hard things. Or maybe just sleeping till noon. Yeah. Yeah. Mornings yeah. are easier when you do that. Yeah. Whose mailbox check is coming in? Chitty chitty bang bang or ran over by a Hyundai a check? Ouch. It's good. We all wish we're jealous. So yeah. energy. Okay. Energy. energy. So I grew up in uh, San, San Fernando Valley, oppressively hot. No one had air in my family in the house or the car. We were just kind of poor. All the cars were old, kind of Dodge Darts, broken down, VW Bugs. You know, we, we brought them. And so we never had, there was never air. And I always just sort of ran hot. Like I was sweating all night. We'd get in the car and there's no carport. Mm. It was parked out in the sun. And it was always, it was always brutal. And uh, I realized, like, I made it all the way through my childhood and high school and stuff. Like, like, no air. And then when I got out of high school, I got into construction, and I had to drive a truck. And I was driving these old, you know, kind of first-generation Datsun mini trucks, you know, from the s late 70s, early 80s. No air, no air, no air. And this thing of, like, getting a vehicle and feeling cold air <laughs> blowing in my face, and it's it's... The, the problem is a double-edged sword in, if you grew up in the San Fernando Valley because, like, you live in apartments, you live in crappy houses, mm -hmm. and you're always parked on the street, so the mm -hmm. car's just baking out mm -hmm. in the sun, and then you get in with no air, and it's, it's horrible. And so I was um, trying to get, like, like, it was a quest to get from this truck to a station in life, like, symbolically, where I could drive a car that had air. 
And uh, at some point, I'd made it just a little bit into into comedy, into show business, whatever. I was doing some bits for K Rock, and I bought myself a very used Toyota Supra that was about 15 years old. But in my world, it was a car. Sure. It didn't have a lumber rack on it and didn't drive like a truck or have a bench seat. It was like a, a car. But it was so old that the air didn't work on it. So I was like, I'm going to fix this air. And I went embarked on this journey where I was going to fix it myself. And I didn't know anything about it, but I was kind of a mechanic. So I was like, oh, what do I do? And I went to some place in Deep Van Nuys and I got the receiver dryer and then you have to give it another Freon charge. But the thing, I fucked this thing up 10 ways to Sunday. <laughs> they at some point sold me like a faulty pump. I uh, had to take the pump back to the place in Van Nuys. I was living in La Crescenta. Every, there's all these big, I tried out and it like feel like, oh, is it cooling off? Is it cooling? No, <laughs> the no. suggestion of air. I'd have to bleed the system and then get, a no, get another Freon charge. Because like once you open the system, you have to get another charge now. It was months and hundreds of dollars, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And it, and it just wasn't happening. And at a certain point, as I was struggling with this, I, I also was doing better in show business and I was like starting to make a little bit of money. And I just went, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this car. I'm going to drop it off at one of those places that says nothing but air conditions. All we do is we fix it. And I was like, I don't care if you have to replace every motherfucking part in this component, receiver, Personal. dryer, pumps, yeah. all of it. Just do it. I don't care what it costs. I'm making money now. I'm dropping it off. And, uh, Jimmy uh, dropped me off. Jimmy, back when you had to have rides, right? Like you pick stuff up, you drop stuff yeah. off. And uh, I remember Jimmy Kimmel, he, he drove me, followed me out there. I dropped the car off. I said, all right. He said, pick it up at five. There'll be frosty air coming right through the vents. I said, all right. I, uh, I got there. I dropped it off. Jimmy and I went out, had dinner, had lunch, you know, played putt-putt golf or something. He came by and he dropped me off at five and I walked into the office and uh, I said, uh, where's the car? We got the frosty air. And he goes, nah, we didn't get, we didn't work on it. I said, <laughs> I said, why not? And my ride had dropped me off. He's like, you took the keys. Oh my God. <laughs> it just sat there. We tried calling you. And then he said, while it was in our parking lot, somebody backed into it. <laughs> And you said, but oh. how's the air? I had to like literally call Jimmy back or something. He turned around. He took me. I said, well, can I just leave it here? He said, no, we're booked up now. You have to yeah. bring it back this in was, a week. This or was not meant is. to be insult to I injury. Like, oh, my this God. Is not so for I, uh, <clears throat> I made the arrangements. I, I came back and I had this. I was now getting a ride, you know, to go pick up the car. My dad gave me a ride. And I said, uh, I had this philosophical discussion with him, and I just said, it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be. I've been fighting with this for eight months on this car. It has fought me every... I wasn't meant to have air conditioning. This is, this is cosmically, it's not meant yes. to be. And then I said to my dad, this car will be stolen or destroyed <laughs> very shortly. And he's like, yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, all right. I've never had a car... Destroyed and never had a car stolen. And uh, sure enough, he dropped me off. I got in it. Frosty, cold air oh. was pouring from the vents. All's you know, well ends well. 900 bucks later, I drove it back to my apartment in uh, Toluca Lake. <laughs> I guess the reason Jimmy didn't drive me is because Jimmy was in New York with Kevin and Bean mm. doing the MTV Music Awards. And I had come back to audition for Loveline, mm. the TV show. So I was like kind of getting going with my career. And I was uh, in my small apartment in uh, Toluca Lake and the uh, Supra was parked on the street directly in front of me. It was like first floor, but the balcony was like four feet off the ground. And I was a nice night. I was just sitting out there talking to Jimmy. And at some point he just said, what was that noise? Oh God. And I said, it was the sound of a <laughs> Ford F-150 pickup truck <laughs> destroying my car, hit it so hard that the guy popped up on the lawn and was now facing me in his pickup truck and the car had carried my car into the middle of the street. He put the car in reverse, the truck, he started dragging, both front tires popped on the rims, but I just dragged it out. I was just like looking at him, literally five feet away from him, just 
down the street, <laughs> sparks coming out, whatever. Car was total. Is Nissan your sp- sponsor? Ford F-150 oh, Ford used F- to be yeah. until I just told Polar that story. story. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. So you had a, a vision that this car... W- so what do you see in my future? I see you being hit by at least six more cars. No, don't say that. <laughs> but the checks, but the checks keep rolling in. I don't have enough limbs. <laughs> yeah, I, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I don't know. I just know that that was an instance where this thing was fighting me, yep. and I was forcing it, and it just didn't want to go there. Is and that it why was you, total? Is that why you have seventeen cooling zones in your house? <laughs> That's now? right. That's I right. thought you were going to say they installed in your car like one of those. Real air conditioning. Like a, a unit? Window, yeah. A wall <laughs> In the back seat. <laughs> yes, that was, uh, that was, you can kind of tell the haves and the have nots because the house I grew up in, we kept collecting mm-hmm. those. Each room would get their own right. window la, la. unit buzzing away. <laughs> but you grew up hot. Like I you, did. so, it, like, I like the hot weather because I like sweating without having to exercise. Mm. So that, I would have taken that car hot boxing thing as a plus. <laughs> Yeah, there we should figure it out. But I've had roommates who had like no problem with the heat. They're just like, man, I go right to bed. No, I've been like, I, I like can't that. do it. I'm too well, hot. Well, they say you're supposed to sleep when it's cooler. Yes. Out, yes. But I don't like that either. 68 degrees in my house every night. Good for you, 68. Gina. It's got to be. Yeah, well, we're talking to a sleep expert when you. Or maybe we're talking to, I think it could have been Andrew Huberman. Huberman, where you're saying, like, the idea when you wake up, you start warming up. That's like your body's natural alarm clock to start warming up. I have one of these sleep rings. Have you seen these sleep rings? Those are cool. So it it tracks when I'm in REM, when I'm in deep sleep, and when I'm just like. Do Do you like the sleep ring? I really like it. Oh, they're not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, now you can talk to I re- No, I really like it. Although um, one morning I was watching Diagnosis Murder. Don't judge me. And it, my sleep ring said that I was in REM during. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> while I was watching. Well, don't tell that to one of the writers of that program because that is an insult. Not since I was going on a rant, looked through the window and saw Engineer Dawson take a big draw. <laughs> Off a flask. Just now? As an artist. No, it was a while back. Has back. an artist been that insulted about their... To be fair, work. it was a Sunday. That's true. Do you that do this true. every day? Yep. You do? Indeed. Yes. That's amazing. Even when you're on the road? Well, we do live versions yeah, of this. Yeah, or we'll double, you know, one day to make up for the next day. Or... And have you traveled a lot during COVID? Or I have, COVID? yeah. Is COVID still going on? I don't know. <laughs> suppose you ask. Hard to say. It was never really going on for me, but but all the rules were going on. I wasn't wasn't really going on in my head. I was just felt like, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to do this thing that I don't want to so do. So you you weren't nervous about it. Ever. No, I never thought about it. I was philosophical. You're either gonna get it or you're not gonna get it. I I, I didn't right. see any way to prevent. You know, I didn't see take you know taking your shoes off before you came back into the house or right. putting on latex gloves your- or. Wearing a mask alone in your car or something, I, I kind of said, "Look, you're going to get it, right. or you're not." Based on many people who, who who people kept saying, "I did everything right and I got it," so I took right. that as why do everything right. So I was just nervous. I never got it. Nobody I I am close to got it, but I did get shingles. Oh, oh I'd really? rather have COVID I'd at least the way COVID. I had it. Yeah, I know. I, oh, shingles is horrible. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad. I had it on my face on my forehead um but the lingering it's like i have long shingles because sometimes it's numb up here now i was lucky it never got really painful oh i was gonna say it, i from what i've heard it's like your nerves are on fire like in your body they always talk about how painful yeah. shingles are i think they are if they're on your body mm. somewhere but here they're just nervous because it's near the eye mm. and mm-hmm. then it can go into your ear too which is what justin bieber had he had oh. that um haze not haze, uh, hunter, um, uh, i'll look it up yeah. we talked about it half his face Ramsey. was paralyzed yeah and, and that's from that virus getting into your oh ear oh my god so they i had to go to like some eye specialist to make sure it wasn't in the eye because oi I mean, Jeez. I'm going, I could live with one eye. <laughs> like, I backtracked. I could live with one eye if that happened. You know, just... Ramsey Hunt. Sandra. Yeah. Ramsey Hunt. So he's okay now? I think he's resting. I think he's on, like, 
medical rest because that's how you get rid of these nervous system issues. How does one get shingles? It's autoimmune. And I thought I was like really healthy. And they say it could be from nerves um, or anxiety. Car bumpers. <laughs> car, <laughs> car bumpers. Um, I don't know how I got it. I just woke up and I, I'm not like a doctor or anything. I play one on the internet sometimes. <laughs> but I just, I had like these red bumps and I was like, I just think I have shingles. And then, yeah, I had it. So that's that story. And also like anyone who had chicken pox, <laughs> which was all, pretty much all of us can just get make, shingles. Yeah, right? right. If you had chicken pox, it's in your body. Yeah, we so still it's have like, it. Just had to be ignited by something. Maybe we know too much to be happy. That's possible. Because it used to be like, take a shot of brandy, <laughs> walk <laughs> it off, on bite on the strap. <laughs> we don't know anything about any of this. Just have a shot. I think you're right. I think there, we know so much. Like, yeah, I think it. Well, if you look at it, if you kind of look at it this way, like we were all, we all get the Howard Hughes version of life where he's seeing these germs everywhere and he doesn't want to touch anything right. and so you go all right so on one extreme we have howard hughes freaked out reclusive scared scared of humanity and germs and and everything and then the other spectrum we have uh my dog phil he's a 110 <laughs> pound lab he'll sleep anywhere and do anything and so you go all right those are the spectrums uh, we're inching toward Howard Hughes. Mm. As a society. Be yes, because we know way too much. Mm -hmm. like so many articles about here's how particles work with a mask, you know, and here's what's here's what's on the surface of a payphone. Or if you cough desk in this work. grocery aisle, it travels to right. three here's grocery a, Here's down. a 3D cloud <laughs> right. of germs that's heading toward your Don't house. Don't go to bakery. Right. Yeah, like Imagine maybe we know too a, much. K95 mask was three years ago. Not right. nobody, unless I guess you were in the construction yeah, or painting exactly. business. I just but, haven't breathed since 2020. That's for the best. Smart. You do yeah. what uh, Mayor Garcetti does. That's right. He, what does he do? He puts his arm around Magic holds Johnson at SoFi Stadium and holds his breath. Yeah, he's fine. When he's taking photographs. <laughs> or so he says. <laughs> Can we agree that... Uh, I think it was it was Garcetti that said he holds his breath, and I think it was Gavin Newsom that said, I had my mask in my hand. Mm -hmm. Can we just agree no answer yeah. might be better than yeah. horrifically right. insane retarded answer? He yeah. didn't inhale. He didn't inhale, and, the, and, and, and Newsom had the mask in his hand. Yeah, so, so his hand's you know, fine. That'll work on an airplane. Hey, yeah. sweetie, <laughs> pipe <laughs> down. <laughs> it's right here. Oh, you mean Well, this? the virus knows if you have the mask in your hand. That's right. I it, guess the implication he was making? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. All right, let me tell you about uh, Freshly, and then we'll get to some news. Fourth of July is almost here. Spend more time celebrating and less time in the kitchen. That's right. Let Freshly handle lunch and dinner. And take advantage of their limited time Fourth of July sale now through July 10th. Save 150 bucks across your first six orders. Yeah, so everyone, I mean, the best part about 4th of July, I think when you get a little older, is the part where you eat mm -hmm. and uh, let Freshly handle that. Delicious, fresh, healthy, prepared meals delivered straight to your door, no cooking required, ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. Over 50 nutritionist designed entrees, like their classic steak peppercorn, sides like uh, masterful mac and cheese, and their uh, new line of plant-based meals as well. New meals added weekly at Freshly. Right, Dawson? Stop stressing about dinner. Now through July 10th, Freshly is offering our listeners a special 4th of July deal. $150 off your first six orders when you go to Freshly.com slash ACS. That's $150 off at Freshly.com slash ACS through July 10th. Don't miss out on this 4th of July offer. Get $150 off at Freshly.com slash ACS. All right, quick break. Right, back with the news right after this. Give the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. Weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad. Stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden. Come on out. Meet news with Gina Gino Grad. Grad. The news with Gina Grad. 
have a little breaking news, at least as we record this today, about Ghislaine Maxwell. She has been sentenced to 20 years in prison for helping the sex offender uh, and globe-trotting financier Jeffrey Epstein sexually abuse teenage girls. She's the British socialite, 60 years old. Uh, she was convicted in December of five charges, including sex trafficking a minor, uh, for recruiting and grooming four girls to have sexual encounters with Epstein, then who was her boyfriend between 1994 and 2004. In imposing, so, I'm sorry, did no yeah. bombshells come out about other people who were involved? She, somehow, whoever was sitting there watching the, the trial shitting their pants. That's crazy. I, I, I don't think there's been any name releases. Hmm. I bet she'll appeal with names. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, oh. so she's been sitting on that. Uh, yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, very yeah, possible. you're right. We yeah. should talk. Mark Garagos will come in here in 40 minutes, and I'll ask you about that, <laughs> about that because oh. she's— Going to want to do some dealing, I, I would assume. She's got the golden book. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I would imagine a lot of attorneys would think that's more important than her, mm -hmm. you know, the other names in the book. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can't yeah. wait to hear what he says. Yeah. I mean, 20 um, years yeah. is a long time for her to be able to name names. That's true. Yes. <laughs> I she agree. She'll think of some. That's yeah. right. And also, are we going to, did did everyone learn from Epstein? Is she going to be in a glass case of some kind and like monitor you know, like 24 you know. that's right <laughs> it 24 seems, hours a day i it's, it's weird how <laughs> this is a thing i mean it's like more conspiracy more this more fbi that more killings in the prison more he wasn't gonna talk <laughs> someone didn't want him to talk kind of kind of feel like Something that seemed like something I'd see in movies 25 years mm -hmm. ago. And I was always like, oh, come on. Oh, come on. But yeah. maybe maybe there is something. Yeah, absolutely. But I, that's a really interesting point. I can't wait to see what Garriga says about that. Because she's still, you're right, she can still appeal. Yeah. And maybe uh, she thought, well, I'll wait, I'll sit on she's this. got to. She has to have names, right? Of course. And they said in the sentencing she had no expression she never she had no remorse she didn't accept any responsibility so mm -hmm. i don't know i think people tend to like atonement and she gave none she's a strange one yeah i actually <laughs> <laughs> i, I just to... wonder how that relationship works yeah. you know what i mean yeah I listened to a podcast when this was like first hitting about her life and she had kind of a weird life, like the daughter of like this magnate, like financier who kind of like was real lukewarm on his daughter, mm -hmm. maybe had some of her daughter issues, you know, and just wanted somebody mm -hmm. to recognize her. I, I, I don't know. But she's out doing the recruiting, right? Yeah, because who's going to... Who's going to be afraid of a woman coming up to you and being like, oh, you're pretty. Yeah, and she you was nice modeling? looking yeah. and British, probably, probably well, well coiffed and trained right. and everything else. Yes. Ugh. Yeah. So now now equal opportunity. We get to be scared of all women and men. Yes. Good. I think that's the takeaway. Yes. Um, let's talk about some of the details of the Roe v. Wave sort of roundup because there's just so much happening so quickly. So judges in Louisiana and Utah have temporarily halted bans on abortion in the wake of this decision. More than a dozen states had what's known as trigger laws, which I'm sure you've been hearing right and left. That would immediately put the ban in place and drastically limit abortions in certain uh, states. The There's 21 to 26 states states that are expected to full out ban abortion. That is 26 to 31 million women of reproductive age uh, in all in all those What's states. What's the combined. cutoff for the reproductive age? I mean, when do you, are you asking when you go into menopause? You mean menopause? I, I mean, like when you're statistically trying to ascertain this, do you start at 13 and end at like, 42? Or no, I don't there, think. I, think I started at 11 mm. and I ended at 46. Oh, Are I we know. using you as the model? <laughs> I I have a feeling I'm strange. That's broad. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's I more think like 13 and 47. That's what I'm going really? I, I, think, like, I don't think they go that deep. Do they? Well, well I think you do. can still have children. <laughs> it, well, no one one can still look. There's there, there's always a They're story about the 67 right. year old woman right. in Nova Scotia who got pregnant with twins or whatever. One can. But there and there's tons of IVF. Same, but you're doing like like, all right, Tom Brady's 44 years old, 
But if you go the range of an oh, NFL yeah. player, it's not Tom Brady. It generally it, ends it, at 32. Cuts off at, yeah, Chris, see what they, reproductive range. I'm Menopause curious. Menopause age, I'm sure. I, it's yeah, I'll be available. curious if they, yeah. go to, if they go that far. I'd be interested, yeah. Can I just ask this? Adam, write this down real quick before we talk to Garagos, because I follow a lot of um, <laughs> cancer survivors, a lot of cancer um, uh, advocates and stuff like that. Gina alluded to IVF. Write down IVF, because I'm very curious. A lot of people are asking what happens to embryos. You know what I mean? You dispose of the embryos after a certain point. You know, you're 55 years old. You've got all the kids you want. That could be seen as a crime, perhaps. You know, mm. if, if in fact life begins at conception, well, and you're throwing away it's interesting. Can you get rid of some of your kids? Well, I don't have the <laughs> option to reduce at one point. Obviously, right. it didn't happen, but this is a real yeah. thing. And yeah, yeah. So we're, now, all of this that seems kind of far fetched. I feel like we understand now that nothing is off the table. And I'll give you a couple examples. So. Um, a lot of people especially said to me over the weekend, well, you know, who, who cares? You could just go to another state and get an abortion. Well, here's the problem, a couple of the problems with that. First of all, a lot of the states that are going to ban are clustered together. So it's not like you're in, you know, this is not accurate because Kansas is still up and running. But it's not like I live in Kansas City. I'm just going to hop over to Missouri. And the, but again, that's an inaccurate example. They're all clustered together. So, you know, good luck. You're going to have to go many states away in a lot of cases. Also, um, well, we're going to provide air. Well, here's in, the thing. Ground transportation. Right. And that's and a lot of a lot of way. Whoever's paying taxes in California, oh. we're, we're going to start off. That's also very possible. For sure. And and businesses are it's putting down a, their a contracts. a windfall for a lot of young single dudes when we start <laughs> carting in, let's say, women who are, you know, fast what? and loose, you know, sexually. I mean, they're, they're here They'll for a reason. through their decisions. They're, they're not born-again Christians. <laughs> they're here for a reason. Right. You could be, yeah. you know, hanging Waiting around. at the airport. Yeah. Yeah, a little pickup yeah. at LAX. Um, the other thing oh, is... I, I don't wait at the airport. <laughs> wait. No. <laughs> no. No, the airport is... Hold up a sign that says, slut. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> see who gets in your car. You want to wait at the shuttle that takes them back to the airport Understood. and see if you can give them a ride. Don't Understood. wait at the airport. That's going to be a very difficult, dark conversation. Got it. Um, so the Republican state representative of Missouri, Mary Coleman, she sponsored a proposal to sue anyone who helps a Missouri resident get an abortion out of state. So yeah, it's not horrible. just you're allowed to leave and go. You are if you are a resident of Missouri. This didn't like go through, by the way. It's it's blessed be the fruit ish. Um, there's also states like Massachusetts and Connecticut that are pre putting in things preventing doctors from being extradited out of state to face major sentences for helping women have a safe procedure. Mike August has a pretty good head on most things politically said, uh, now we're going to get into a uh, don't play Sun City type of a situation. Oh. You know, Pat mm -hmm. Oswald mm -hmm. is not going to Mississippi. Right. Or he's, he's not going to uh, New, Orleans. New Orleans to do a show. Right. He wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, really? it's going to be a thing. Right. Celebrities are going to pipe up. I always have That's weird feelings about that because it's like for the, for the residents that are there and also disagree with the law, now they don't get to laugh either. You know what I mean? It's like it's not a lot yeah. of pro lifers in the crowd for the Pat Noms. Right? Like, how is that really? And God forbid, maybe there are a dozen or two. Maybe you'll maybe you'll change your mind. Right. That's right. Um, the other, uh, just a couple of things, just because we're doing a little rundown. Um, there's also been this thing on Instagram. I'm sure you guys haven't seen it as much because I don't know if it really they're targeting it to you. But for women, it's if you have a period tracker on your phone, which is like a really easy way to keep. Uh, it, it's like a fertility for thing. Cycle days. They, everyone says, get it off your phone, erase that information, which sounded fucking crazy to me. And I what? thought that was a little nuts. Well, it's not crazy. Um, an example we're dealing with of that right now is um, the director of Missouri's state health department. He admitted in court that he kept a spreadsheet tracking the menstrual cycles of women who visited Planned Parenthood in the state because they're trying to mathematically figure out, wait a second, she should have had her period. She didn't have her period. Did she get an abortion? Who has that kind of time? I was uh, going to say, uh, there's a lot of people. You don't say elaborate. I, yeah, I this can't is... even walk through the fucking aisle at the store with the feminine napkins <laughs> without having to fucking stop my, for a minute. To my, sleep, my, breath. my sleep ring does track your menstrual period. Uh, oh, it does? Yeah, but you know. I was going to say, are we safe yeah, right now? I'm, I'm safe right now. How did she get one? <laughs> 
so I just, just couldn't imagine that spreadsheet. When, it, when people say, <laughs> when people say like, whatever, states' rights, fuck you. Okay, let's let's go with that. It's not just that. This is really bleeding out into other categories. You know, you know other growing states, up other when categories. nobody cared about me, I would have, I wouldn't have minded. Like somebody's yes, attention. caring about yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I matter. It's like when your stepdad's beating on you, and <laughs> sure. he's, I'm doing this because I love you. That's right. I'm keeping track of your period because <laughs> I care. I, I, one could say it's the ultimate form of attention. That's I true. got I got pregnant on the pill. Um, it was Viagra, <laughs> but um, I waited for the punchline. I know, I, knew I know. That was coming. But no, I never had kids. Hey, I couldn't well, have. Tell your husband that one was a fucking eight and a half. <laughs> what? Tell your husband that joke was an eight and a half. That was a good one. No, no, I wrote that one. And I can kind of tell the real zingers. <laughs> The There's, guy wrote on Boy Meets World. I think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> There's a meme he's going around hilarious. too about that. I, There's a meme I'd going around it about is. that, saying like, you know, if God didn't want you to have an abortion, then he, then we should ban Viagra because I guess God wants you to have a limp dick. So it's like, what are we putting science into? What are we not putting science into? And then in the realm of okay, but we're done here and we're going to move on to other things. Uh, Justice Clarence Thomas argued in a concurring opinion released on Friday that the Supreme Court should reconsider its past rulings um, codifying rights because everybody suddenly the legal scholar knows that things should have been codified to contraception access, same sex relationships, same sex marriage. We need to take another look at all of this as well. He wants to take a look at same sex marriage. Yeah, it says in his concurring opinion, Thomas wrote that the justice quote, should reconsider all of the court's precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell. That's referring to three cases having to do with Americans' fundamental privacy, due process, and equal protection rights. I don't think he's going to be able to rally his c- confederates But for he only this has one. to rally, it's six to three. I mean... I uh, I always say this, but I just I, I don't I don't think that I don't think we're going to go that deep with this. I, I, you know, Adam, insane. you know, because you can see the future. So. Normally, crystal brain. <laughs> normally, I do have a crystal brain. I don't I don't <laughs> think the gay marriage or interracial marriage. Or I don't I don't think we're going to go. Well, certainly not that because he has a white that. wife. Jamie. That's right, he has a white wife. But also, like literally, none of us, nobody on any side of anything, thought that this was going to happen. I agree. It was a bad precedent. It was like a bad legal rule. Like yeah. most people know law. It's law scholars goes Roe v. Wade was bull, a bullshit thing. We like what it was for, but it's not constructed very right. well. So it was always vulnerable. Right. And now they got uh, people. But what are, guy isn't happy that like his the girl he impregnated could get an abortion? That was my next question. This benefited everybody across the board. I'm sure there's many women who've been talked into having an abortion that would have liked a chance to have a child with that person. And that's going away for everybody. You're absolutely right. Well, it's crazy. well, they'll be able to get them in California, New York, and half the whatever if places. They can, and, but those facilities, those clinics are going to be buckling under the the weight of all the people coming in they're overwhelmed already they're pre-overwhelmed they're not going to they're going to be turning I, tons I of people think, away i think the i think the democrats will rally hard on this one and will will figure it out or or prevent that from happening that, i think talking. women are smart and they'll find the right <laughs> I also think they should be. Dr. Drew said half of abortions are drugs. I mean, you take They're a pill. Plan B. Like somebody's somebody's going to be sending shit They're, places. So they you are. Have to do that. They're coming from other countries. People are stockpiling Plan B now. CVS, which is the largest you know drugstore in the country, is now putting a limit on you can only buy three Plan Bs. And um, they're talking about mail tracking, but they're hoping that that doesn't the, become a thing. I wonder if the people at the Mr. store. Dow! Yeah, I wonder if that's in play me. I wonder if the people... Leave it a death roll! You can probably tell the difference politically because you'll go to the store and half the people will be trying to hoard Plan B and the other is going to be trying to hoard baby formula. (laughs) (laughs) And I wonder if those two have to fucking pass each other in the aisle. Like, they get in each other's Uh, way. Good luck, brother. (laughs) There's a civil unrest at CVS. That's right. Oh, yeah. speaking of that, I do think this is a high time for a drag queen to be named Sybil Unrest. Mm. And somebody oh. needs to get on that. Or Sybil oh. Undressed. Oh, that's oh. good to watch that as well. I know that's a good. drag queen named Head of Lettuce. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
That I can I can Sounds confirm. Sounds super attractive. You know, ever it. since my accident where I was hit by a car, I it, we I, get it. I, get, <laughs> <laughs> I still get nervous walking across the street. So I like I do my best Rue fucking Paul. I like cross the street like a drag queen. Yes, so make yourself get out of my way. Like like a coyote's coming up on you. <laughs> right. get as big as possible. Wow, uh, what does head of lettuce look like? I can um, we can show you a picture of head of lettuce. Just a redhead. That's head of lettuce. She oh. was on Drag Race. She Not had bad. red hair when I met now her. Now she's got green hair. Yeah, because she's Not the head bad. of lettuce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I we love that around show. around she? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, drag queens, they all have, do you have to have your male junk to be a drag queen? I think for the most part, from what I understand, is you are a full-on male that's dressing okay. up. You pee standing up. Oh, right. yes, because there was I this crazy... Oh, do you See? have an arched pelvis? <laughs> <laughs> there was this crazy episode of Drag After Race. The accident, her pelvis got knocked <laughs> That was in part of the settlement, <laughs> where somebody stopped the show, I think her name was Cinnamon, um, because she announced, I've been lying to all yes, of you. And she said, I saw that. I'm trans, I'm not really a drag queen. Mm. Yeah, now, it my, was it was a big deal. My grandfather was outraged. I remember after he heard that, he <laughs> he snapped a pencil, he put his pipe down, he got up and stormed out of his den. <laughs> he wailed. I don't know what to believe. And he yeah. ran into traffic. He needed air conditioning. Oh, that's right. He was just hot and cranky. My grandparents had the one unit in the bedroom. But that didn't benefit us who'd sleep on the sofa. That's hoarding. I know. That's not fair. All right, let's do one more. All right, let's find a, a little fun one here. Um, oh, so let's talk about this bench clearing brawl over the weekend. Oh, yeah. uh, tempers boiled on Sunday afternoon in Anaheim, which resulted in benches clearing. And we'll show you. I'll just put the video up while we talk about it. Um, so things got so crazy at one point, someone threw a full crate of sunflower seeds onto the field, which I, we also have that video if you want. So what happened was in the top of the second inning, Angels pitcher Andrew Wants drilled Mariners right fielder Jesse Winker in his leg with a pitch. That sent Winker off kept trying to get to Wants, and everybody just jumps onto the field, and it's like a good old-fashioned fight. Went on 18-minute uh, game delay. Um, I love that the, the uh, bullpen has to come out. Yeah, they of have course, to come out. Of they're, course, they're boys. I didn't know people love sunflower seeds that much. <laughs> wow, they're going at it hard. <laughs> they are. It's It, it really it's real is fun. like old school. Um, in a total combined, 12 members of the Mariners and Angels were reprimanded for their roles in this. Uh, the punishments included multiple game suspensions, undisclosed fi closed fines. Show the yeah, Here show the go. sesame or the sunflower seeds. Oh wow. come on, man! They are the home team. That's our ground crew. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Shut up. Sunflower seeds. You know, just take that. Yeah, it's like you're giving him a gift. I don't get it. So it was retribution for something, right? I, yeah, I he hit him. He hit the guy. Uh, right, but they usually hit you because someone else got I, hit. It was, oh. a, it was a series of events. I don't follow football, so <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Clearly. Well, maybe there's a new entry in the Highland Games, the Sunflower Seed Chuck. <laughs> yeah, the seed toss. He has a good distance on this. Well, thing. he's probably right-handed. He's a ball player. Sure. Natural mm -hmm. athlete. Yeah. yeah, I don't – first off, the seed obsession with uh, – baseball and i guess it's the seeds versus the dip True. when they're trying to get the <laughs> get that on but i would argue how about we just go cold turkey for yeah. the for the whole game who gets to snack during their game i downtime yeah. yeah yeah hit by pitch in second inning first inning uh, through behind oh threw they behind throw another behind. guy in the first inning and then the second inning he hit the guy so oh okay so they it's deliberate like it was, he deliberately hit him with yeah if they if it's by mistake and somehow everyone always knows, but if it's by mistake, they'll never fight. If it's on right. purpose, they'll fight. Or it's perceived to be on purpose. Well, so, they know because of the memo. Yeah. Right. They they know, well, they know because whatever the history is, mm -hmm. like, right. you know, right. the guy hits a home run, he does the bat flip, Show and he boat. looks at the yeah. pitcher, and he now, now jogs, right. and next time that guy gets up, he's getting a bean ball. But if, like, the bases are loaded, and it's the bottom of the ninth, and you hit him, and he takes his base in the winning that. run, you didn't want to do that. Right. So right. That it's, all, it's all about intention with them. But you know how we you talk about, like, pickpocketers and stuff, and how quaint that is? It's isn't it quaint somehow to see a bench-clearing baseball brawl? 
Yeah. Like it seems like so, a, a, a wonderful thing of the past. People that, like, get hurt, Gina. I'm glad you find it quiet. I do. I really do. <laughs> like you're sticking timey. up for your boys. Yeah, you're throwing fisticuffs. Well, and also the crowd cheers it on, That's but right. you, you punch out one Giants fan in the parking lot, and all of a sudden you're, the, you're, the, bad, a touch you're the bad guy. Uh, paralyzed for life. <laughs> Yeah, there was a uh, there was we, another hit by pitch this weekend where Bryce Harper, like the one of the biggest stars in baseball, uh, broke his thumb, and Blake Snell hit it hit him and broke his thumb, and Bryce was so mad, but he's yelling at him, "I know it wasn't your fault. It's okay. I know it's not your fault." But even though he knew it was a, it's he's gonna be out for a long time. So I'll do that in the bedroom sometime. <laughs> 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 really? Yeah, it was, it was interesting. So he was just he was just venting. We all yeah, he was he was he was very visibly upset. Um, Blake Snell took his hat off, like I'm sorry, and because they've known each other since they were kids, so he's yelling. But like, I know it wasn't your fault. I know you didn't mean to. Oh, Do wow. they have a penalty box like in hockey? No, that's said the I know. locker room. He said I know. Yeah, so I mean, you can't you can, you uh, lip readers are, are all are all analyzing uh, <laughs> Bryce Harper's. Um, um, yelling at was he the now. guy who had the drug problem and was out of the league or something? Josh somebody? Hamilton. Josh Hamilton. I don't Hamilton. think he plays anymore. I think he's been out of the league. I mean, kind of look like the same guy. They have a similar look. Uh, Josh got some tats. I think. No, Bryce is a good player. Yeah, we used Hamilton to go s- came back and was yeah, good. Hamilton yeah. came back and uh, was an all star. Yeah, like he, I think he won the home run derby or mm. finished second. He was a real good player. It was like a good story about a guy who got in trouble with. Drugs right. and he got thrown out of the league and it was like bottom out. But he was like a real hot, like he was a number one draft pick or something. He's a real big prospect and bottom down. And then he came back and you know won you know won the home yeah, runs we championship. Love that story. Do they whatever. still trade <laughs> baseball cards? Brian <laughs> Gum. How dare I mean yes we do. <laughs> you do? <laughs> no, I haven't collected them on minute. But I mean they still make them. I don't think the gum is involved in what anymore. like in clear or whatever. Uh, Tops the best had the gum. gum. Tops. Tops had the gum. Yeah, I don't think gum has the impact or lure right. it has for kids today growing up for One us. One hard like, stick of rectangle gum. Just, I'm going to walk three miles and get a piece of gum <laughs> from the liquor store and then come back. Like, good luck getting my kids to do that. Yeah. Also, if somebody ever had like a bowl, if you had some relative, some uncle or something, or one of your friends' houses or whatever, had some sort of bowl with gum in it, no. like bubble gum in it. It's like, we're, we're moving in. Uh, we're, that, the thing ever. we're hanging there Where'd full you get time. This? We There's no more of that, right? No, right. We had really caramels. Yeah. My yeah. grandmother always Worthers. had caramels. Yeah. yeah. I made the mistake of chewing the Topps gum like when I was a little kid. It's horrible. It's, First of all, it's it, so it, hard. It crumbles into yes. a thousand pieces yes. in your mouth. Yes. And if you can get it into a paste, <laughs> that's the best it can do. The big thing, too, however. So I that's awesome. The shredded. We didn't get a lot of sugar, yeah. so I loved it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was like a sugar. Well, the, for our grandparents, and I actually still like this candy. The hard candy of choice was the strawberry candy oh, yeah. that had the little strawberry wrapper on the. Mm-hmm. No, no go oh, in it. I know that. Just one. a hard candy with the yeah. little green top I and the red. I thought it had goo too, but I yeah, do too. I don't recall goo. <laughs> I, I remember goo as well. We never had any of that at the Cola <laughs> houses, but there were other people that had it. Yeah, and by the way. It was like ribbon candy sitting in a bowl in the living room. <laughs> Both parents smoked. Yeah. It was th- it's been there for three years. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? You grab no it, air. it come out in one piece. Yes. You have to like break it off, but <laughs> yes. still like that's the best house. Yes. That house is the best. Like that would not move the needle in my kids' world ten millimeters. It'd be a punishment. Eat yes. that. <laughs> All right. Let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad and that's the news. God wants you to have a limp dick. Gina, Gina. <laughs> that was the news with Gina Grant. Well, X chair, last but not least. Many of us spend a lot of time in our office chair. And uh, look, you spend a lot of time, I say, get a good bed, get a good car. You spend a lot of time there. Get a good office chair like X chair. It's so important to invest in the right chair with the right level of support and comfort. And you will be more productive. X chair is my favorite place to hang out. I got I bought an X chair many, many years ago just for my home office and now I sit on one when I do the podcast. X chairs patented dynamic variable lumbar or DVL offers the ultimate customized support. X chair can even give you a massage or heat you up or cool you down. And uh, thanks to X chair's new FS three sixty armrest, you can even adjust that. So you get it dialed in and being the perfect position for you. This is um, 
something you should treat yourself to, the X chair. Am I right, Dawson? X chair prices will increase on July 11th. You still have time to get an X chair at current prices. So shop now and beat the price increase. Go to xchairadam.com now. That's the letter X chair, adam.com or call 1-844-4X-CHAIR. X chair is a 30-day guarantee of complete comfort and you can finance your purchase for as little as $30 a month. xchairadam.com. Are All they right. one of your sponsors? Yes. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> They're sending you one right now. Really? Yes. I so careful of this. It's awesome, right? Do I get to take it home? Sure, yes. Okay. We'll wheel it out for you. Yeah. Let's recut that check, and then we can talk about the chair. <laughs> Hollywood Improv. That'll be Hollywood, California, July 8th, and also doing a locally grown comedy at uh, Vitello's, and that'll be uh, Studio City. Great place. Have dinner downstairs. Come upstairs and see some comedy July 21st. Wendy Lieb- Lieben is uh, where you can go if you want to uh, hit her up on Twitter or Instagram as well. And thanks for coming back, Thank Wendy. you so much for having me. I had a great time. My pleasure. And I'm going to be in Springfield, Missouri, Blue Room Woo! Comedy Club, July 15th, 16th. We'll do some live pods there and some stand-up there as well. And until next time, Adam Kroll for Wendy Lieben and Gina Grad and Paul Bryan say it. Mahala fucking methadone and they can't get off it and it's called the minimum wage you shall get the least amount society sees you do to do your job and then there's uh, the argument well i was a mother of three single supposed to you're not supposed to you're supposed to be fucking snot no 16 in high school get minimum wage